Egypt. The Muslim Brotherhood has condemned the, the arrest of its spiritual leader Mohammed Badir over allegations of incitement to violence and murder. A Brotherhood spokesman claims Badir's arrest is part of a plot against the 2011 revolution that ousted Hosni Mubarak. The United States has also criticized the arrest, saying it violates his human rights. Egypt's former vice president Mohammed El Baradai, meanwhile, is now also facing charges of breaching national trust. That's after he resigned from the government in protests against the military's crackdown on anti-coup protests. Now, one of the United States' most experienced diplomats, Jeffrey Feltman, meanwhile, who is now with the United Nations, has arrived in Cairo for a new round of talks to address the crisis in Egypt. Feltman is the first senior UN figure to visit since the June 30th protests and the overthrow of President Mohamed Morsi. Live to Algiers, is Bernard Smith now, who joins us from our bureau in Cairo. Bernard, as always, when it comes to Egypt, a lot to talk about. Let's start with the, the arrests of the top leadership of the Muslim Brotherhood and now also calls for Mohamed al baradai to stand trial. What message is this new leadership in Egypt trying to, to send right now? How serious is all this? Well, first we talk about uh, Mohammed Badia, the uh, spiritual leader of the Muslim Brotherhood. He's, his uh, trial date is now set for August 25th, so it's only next week. And in Cairo, in Egypt, that's very swift justice indeed. Most people have to wait months or perhaps even years before a trial gets to court. So that is an indication of how the military and the interim government want to get the Muslim Brotherhood's leadership into court as quickly as possible. Well, for the former Vice President Mohammed al baradai well, the consequences of the charges he faces are much less severe. He faces a fine of up to $1,400 for uh, for uh, bringing the uh, sort of bringing the country into disrepute, if you like, this charge was brought against him because he failed to give notice to the people who had appointed him uh, that he was going to resign. It's more symbolic, really, and another indication from the interim government by by allowing this case to go forward, it says it sends this signal that you're either with us or you're against us, Foley. Mm. Uh, meanwhile, the small protests, small-scale protests continuing in Egypt. Uh, Bernard, these protests breaking the curfew. How are the security forces handling this? Are they cracking down at all on, on the protesters? No, uh, they're not. Uh, uh, so far this evening, we've just had a quick check around, and we think most of them have finished. They tend to have finished by now. It's one o'clock in the morning here, but they do go on well into the curfew time. It starts at the curfew's at seven o'clock, and many of these protests have only just finished about uh, about an hour or so ago. The security forces let them happen. It's difficult to predict where they happen because the organisers are now frightened that if they flag them up in advance, uh, they open themselves up to uh, possible violence from people who don't want protesters coming through their neighbourhood. The numbers are ebb and f ebbing and flowing as well. Uh, sometimes the numbers are a bit lower, sometimes they increase, but this is a working day in a working week. All me. right. Uh, on the diplomatic front, uh, Jeffrey Feltman, the under UN Secretary General, is in Cairo. What is he doing there? Who is he going to be talking to? And are we at a stage where international diplomacy can, can still work in this Egyptian crisis? Well, Jeffrey Fel Feltman is down, we're told to meet the interim prime minister and interim Egyptian fo uh, foreign minister tomorrow. But when remember, when you talk about international diplomacy, the dis diplomacy tried by the United States and the European Union failed manifestly last week. They tried uh, repeatedly to prevent any sort of violent breakup of those two pro-Morsi anti-coup camps uh, that were in Cairo. Uh, we know that diplomacy failed, uh, failed miserably because those camps were violently broken up. So uh, Jeffrey Felton's got a tough ask, I think, if he's going to persuade the interim government here to take any great notice of what the international community has to say. Bernard, thank you very much indeed. That's Algiers Bernard Smith, live for us in Cairo.